I've known about cat cafes for years, but I've never been to one. I've known about this one. I always wanted to come here, and so I'm delighted to be here. I've spent my career studying lizards, how they evolve, how they're adapted to the environment, and so on. Now, at the same time, I've always loved cats, but it never occurred to me to do anything scientifically with cats. And then about 10 years ago, I discovered that I was wrong about the state of cat research, that people were studying cats the same way that I study lizards and people study lions and elephants and so on, using all the latest cutting edge techniques. And then I had what I humbly submit was a brilliant idea. I would teach a first year class called the science of cats. And the idea is that I would lure in students with their interest in cats and then teach them how we study nature, how we study animals, just using cats as the vehicle. And from that, I had the idea, well, there are loads of people out in the world who are interested in cats. Why don't I write a book with the same idea? And so that's what I did. My father loved cats. That's where my love of cats come from. And so we got this cat when I was five, you know, as a present for my father on his birthday. And then we got another one. They were both Siamese two years later. And then for the next 20 years, we had cats in the house. When that second round of cats passed away, my mother said, no more cats. And then as my father got older, one day my mother shocked all of us by saying, you know, I think we should get a cat for your father. He, it would be good for him. I live with four cats. The first two cats are Winston and Jane. And I grouped them together because they're brother and sister. They were about two weeks old and they were rescued and hand raised by a friend of ours. And at four months, they moved into our house. And the interesting thing about them is that they don't look at all like each other. I learned during writing my book, I've always wondered, how could two such different cats be brother and sister? Well, I now know it turns out that many cats that live in, in groups, unowned cats, the female, when she's receptive to mating, will mate with multiple males. And so it is quite common for female cats to have litters in which there are multiple fathers in the litter. I suspect that's the case with, with Winston and Jane. Cat number three is Nelson. And Nelson came into the household and he just wanted to play with the older cats, with Jane and Winston, and they wanted to have nothing to do with him. But as Nelson grew up, he continued to try to get attention. As he got bigger, he started bullying the older cats. And that, that, was, that was not good. So we decided we need to get a buddy for Nelson. And so we got another European Burmese from the same breeder, Archie, who is the same breed but a very different color. And they hit it off like gangbusters. And so that's how we came to have four cats living in the house. So you can see in a domestic cat, it's wildness. And so just you see one walking along the graceful way they do, or when they're stalking something. My cats this morning were stalking a little bug that got into the house, but they're down. And it's just fascinating to see that, that wild behavior come out. You know, the scientist of me often comes out and just watching them and, and thinking about why they are as they are. I think there's two misconceptions. One is that cats can't be trained. That is absolutely wrong. Cats are very food motivated and they're actually very trainable. The other idea is that cats are aloof loners, that they're unsociable. And that turns out to be incorrect as well. In fact, in places where a lot of cats live in the same area, when there's a lot of food, you'll have a lot of cats, they form into social groups and the members of that group are very friendly to each other. And these social groups are actually very similar to the prides of lions. I always assume that cats meow to each other to communicate, and they're just including us in their social circle, if you will, by meowing to us. It turns out that's not true, that cats do not generally meow to each other to communicate. And so meowing to us is a behavior that they've picked up during the domestication process. So a tame cat is simply a cat that's been raised nicely and behaves in a friendly way, as opposed to a domesticated species, which has evolved, that's genetically different. A tame one is just how you raise them. Turns out many cats are tameable. Is it their genetics, their nature, or is it how they're raised up, how they're nurtured? And the answer is, it's some of both. I want to tell you one story about Nelson related that just popped into my head. So we had these little toys we would play with, you'd jingle them like a kitten, you would go crazy. But shortly after he joined our household, he started picking up his toys, bringing them to me and dropping them at my feet and then looking up at me. And if I picked up the toy and tossed it, he would run and get it and bring it back to me. Now, I hadn't trained him to do that at all. It was entirely on his own. Turns out there's a little bit of scientific research on this. And it turns out that about 20% of cats do just like Nelson. They will fetch and bring toys to be played with. 
And so that was actually a great contribution of Nelson's because I was completely clueless about that. And I doubt I would have found that particular research without Nelson prompting me to look it up. So he really should be a co-author in many respects. Playing with the cats, it's just so heartwarming to see them chasing after a little string or jumping up and things, so that's great. And then having a cat in your lap purring and so content and happy, that's just, just makes my heart feel good.